It is really a pleasure and an honor to introduce George Eliot that you all know. And uh, he was, of course, one of the <laughs> a usual star of the uh, conferences and he was uh, in the 91 conference. I met him for the, I, I met him for the first time in Kingston actually, uh, when I, I gave a, a, a talk of a beginner and he was asking questions and I didn't know him. I told the story two days ago, but I'll repeat it. And he asked a question and I was lucky, the beginner's luck not to be intimidated. So <laughs> I could more or less answer. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, so he talked, I mean, he's been classifying um, simple inductive limit C star algebras. Uh, this is what he talked about last time that I listened to him. And today it's well-behaved simple C star classification of well-behaved simple C star algebras. Thank you, George. Well, th thank you. Um, um, mine was larger than life, uh, even, uh, well, and uh, I, to me, he still is. Um, um, I, I, I do have one story um, uh, which, um, in, uh, involves some um, uh, when he at a time, the time when he was a very junior um, faculty member at University of Pennsylvania. Uh, this this was um, uh, he 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 complained to Anthony about uh, a, a, an interview with with uh, Carson and uh, with Dick Carson and um, and I, and I I think that's uh, uh, I think that's how I. Uh, or heard about it. Uh, he, he had asked for a um, he had asked for uh, funds to travel to a meeting, and uh, Dick had said no, but I will help you organize your accounts. All right. Uh, uh, well, then another another uh, story. Um, I'm, so I'm admitting everybody here. Uh, um, they're coming up on the screen. I'm just letting them in. <laughs> All right. I don't know that. I don't ask who. <laughs> okay, uh, but uh, the, the another another story not related by Anthony was when they were the two of them were coming back to uh, Penn, I guess to uh, Penn from uh, maybe Berkeley, um, and um, uh, it, it seems that Vaughn used some of his uh, points to upgrade <laughs> upgrade to business class uh, in that long flight. Yeah. Well, all right. Uh, um, Another another uh, remembrance I have is that um, uh, um, the memory I have is is, is uh, when both Vaughn and I were visiting David Evans in Swansea, and David took us out to uh, well, knots have a, a long history in, in Wales. <clears throat> of course, Vaughn's family, Vaughn's ancestry is Wales, uh, and. Um, <clears throat> Well, I don't know, that's, uh, that's those are two unrelated comments, I guess. <laughs> but uh, the the uh, David took us on a on a tour, a not uh, carving a tour, to search to search out some ancient uh, stone carvings um, of knots. This was quite exciting. Um, took us a while to find some of them, but uh, but eventually we found, uh, as I recall, we did find some things, uh, inter very interesting things. So. Well. <coughs> um, I, I wanted to go back to the very history of the, of the very early history of the subject, even before um, uh, um, what um, uh, Joachim was talking about. Oh, I, I was going to share my screen uh, uh, to show this. Um, um, okay. This is, is this coming up then? Uh, it's a paper by um, Carson with with a um, um, tribute to uh, Israel Halperin, <coughs> with a footnote, a historical footnote. Um, so the paper is about Murray von Neumann equivalence of projections, and uh, um, the footnote on projections is um, from personal conversations with Murray von Neumann and Halperin. The, this author has concluded the remark to von Neumann by Halperin was fundamental to the development of the comparison theory of projections. 
helped her and as a young mathematician sent to the Institute for Advanced Study for early guidance by von Neumann, was invited to be a party to the very first discussions von Neumann had with Murray. Murray too had been sent as a young postdoc to von Neumann. In, in those early discussions, von Neumann was setting Murray on the project that was to become the subject they called rings of operators and more specifically the theory of factors. The day following Halperin's remark, von Neumann mentioned to Halperin, excitedly so I am told, that it seemed to lead to significant consequences. He requested Halperin's permission to use that suggestion. The permission was granted, of course. Um, and there was, there was another example, another such example mentioned and uh, evidently von Neumann was punctilious where others' ideas were involved. Well, uh, <clears throat> I wanted, since uh, judging from my experience, um, uh, uh, um, it's, 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 it's difficult to find time to, to actually read um, a conference abstract. I'm, I'm going to put mine up and um, you know, maybe you'll see why. <clears throat> I'll just review it, <coughs> review the abstract. A brief survey, <coughs> excuse me, a brief survey, is, does this come up on the screen? A brief survey will be given of the classification of simple, separable, amenable sister algebras. Amenable equals nu nuclear. I, I like the, to keep the um, more general uh, uh, description, which are Zhang Su stable and possibly redundant satisfy the universal um, uh, coefficient theorem, UCT. There are many examples of such algebras, but note that if a given simple UCT separable amenable c algebra is not known to be stable under tensoring with the Jang Su algebra, this is assured just by tensoring it anyway with this algebra. Furthermore, the invariant can be formulated- George, we can't see your page. Oh, uh, no face, uh, the face? Well, uh, how is that uh, better? We're worse? looking at the Cadison page now. We, 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 see see page, so we can't see your page. You can't see the page. Oh, well, uh, all right. So, so I'll, uh, um, I, okay, I'll have to share again, maybe. Okay. <laughs> well, we, um, we are seeing Cadison's yeah. paper. All right. So, um, well, uh, Okay, so here's the um, abstract. Can you see the abstract now? Yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Um, um, my my my, um, my father was a was a physicist, and he was always um, annoyed when I um, wasn't sufficiently prepared for something. <laughs> he thought it was um, it was. Uh, bad to be absent-minded, but that's, I'm afraid that I can't avoid that. I've had difficulty avoiding that. Okay, so furthermore, well, all right, there are many examples of such algebras, but classifiable, but note that if a given simple UCT algebra, a classifiable algebra is not known to be, well, it's a separable meanable. We don't assume uh, uh, Jang Su is stable. Uh, suppose it's not known to be stable under tensioning with the Jang Su algebra. This can be assured just by tensoring it anyway with this algebra. Furthermore, the invariant can be formulated in a way that is insensitive to this operation. Of course, it is only complete after tenderization. Well, that, that's the um, how this uh, that's uh, that, uh, that's how my um, original uh, um, uh, submission of an abstract was rendered, um, which is which is even better than the original, I think. Um, Tenderization is much more, um, much more to the point than tens just tensorization. Well, all right. Um, um, the, the, um, okay, now, now you can see my face, I hope. I can't see my face, but uh, I guess I should be able to look at, all right. We are um, seeing the abstracts. Oh, oh exactly. right. I, I didn't. Um, I've got to go back to sharing again. It seems you can only uh, pull up one thing at a time. All right. Um, I, I wanted to pull up some notes now. Um, um, I think you have to stop share and then share again. Yeah, oh, really?
Let's go stop share. All right. Yeah. Okay. And um, and then share again. All right. All right. Okay. Now I'm looking for some uh, handwritten notes. Um, um, Okay, well, I, uh, I, uh, Maybe I'll just use the blackboard. I, I, um, okay, but uh, the, the um, I didn't drill in the, um, the um, procedures uh, carefully enough. Um, we see the board. It's fine. We see sorry? the we yeah. see the board well. Yeah. Is it um okay so um uh, what what is uh, classification uh, I wanted to stop off with that so the, the title is the classification of um, of well behaved um uh, simple sister algebras um what what is uh, classification. Well, it, um, if, if the isomorphism classes of a class of, and, and this is a, a question in general, uh, it makes sense as a question in general, and it, it seems that, that it has special uh, characteristics in the, um, in the uh, setting of uh, operator algebras, um, which uh, with, uh, they, they do spill out other, elsewhere, but haven't really been uh, seized on. If the isomorphism classes of a class of mathematical objects can be nicely parameterized uh, by a space, a space of moduli, uh, then classification has been achieved. Um, th this is um, this is possible. Uh, this is this is quite widely possible. For instance, um, uh, for finite simple groups, so you have finite simple group number one, finite simple group number two, and so on. And it's, uh, it's also possible for elliptic curves. Their elliptic curves are parameterized um, by, the, uh, by a point in the upper half plane. And um, uh, the ice, but, and then two such uh, points um, are, um, <clears throat> give you isomorphic elliptic curves, uh, isomorphic complex structures on the torus, if, the, um, <clears throat> if they're related by, um, uh, a, two, a two by two matrix of um, determinant one SL two Z. <clears throat> Interestingly, that's the um, when two um, non when two stabilized um, um, non commutative tori are um, isomorphic. Um, and in fact, Manning and and Marcoli. Um, <clears throat> Gave a talk at the Canadian Mathematical Society this morning. Um, um, at the same time as Joachim's talk, I guess, um, as, as when Matilda talked. Um, the, 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 these things are very closely related. If you think of the, um, uh, the elliptic curves as uh, complex structures on a torus, and what's the torus? It's the quotient of the um, of the complex plane by um, 
a subgroup isomorphic to Z squared, and the generators of which are, um, say, the complex number one, and then the um, and then some other um, some other uh, complex number um, in the um, upper half plane. Well, we, I'm saying the upper half plane because uh, to stay away from the real axis, uh, because uh, then you don't get a <coughs> You don't get a quotient isomorphic to uh, the torus, but so you get, so every tau gives you a complex structure, and they're isomorphic if and only if um, um, they differ by SL two Z. And there's a fun the fundamental domain looks something like this. So and so it, it, it's a, it's also a uh, it's a sphere with one point missing. <coughs> sphere. So that that's the nice space of moduli for elliptic curves. And what Manning and, and Marcoli um, noticed is that um, if, if the tau approaches the real axis, then, then um, you can look at the, um, you have a Z squared sitting inside the real axis. And um, if, it's, if it's an ir and if it's an irrational point you're approaching, then the, you can look, well, first of all, in the upper half plane, you don't have to look at the quotient space. Typically, uh, um, what, well, according to following Kahn, what you would do is um, take the uh, Caesar algebra of continuous functions on the um, on the plane, vanishing at infinity, and take the cross product by the z squared translation by z squared, the, the subgroup generated by one and tau. Okay, so that gives you a Caesar algebra of a spectrum, the uh, two two uh, the two torus, a complex two torus, and as tau approaches a, a, a theta on the um, on the line, you can, if you take the cross product of continuous functions on the line vanishing at infinity by um, the, the group generated by one and theta, then that gives you um, um, a stabilized irrational rotation algebra. And these are a continuous field of Caesar algebras. So um, Manning and Marcoli propose that this is a way of viewing a complex structure on the um, on the irrational rotation algebra on the non-commutative torus. <clears throat> well, all right, but um, this is, um, what I'm doing is just giving interesting examples of, uh, in the operator algebra context of, uh, of spaces of moduli. Another example, of course, is the, the uh, powers uh, factors, what are called, sometimes called the powers factors, three lambda, zero less, very special ones. Uh, uh, and Kahn proved that they were unique, unique to be of type three lambda and amenable. But if, if, as long as lambda is not equal to zero, you have zero strictly less than lambda less than equal to one, then you have um, a, a continuous field in a natural sense. Um, and it's a smooth parameter space, of course, it's a continuous field over the smooth parameter space. UHF algebras, well, they have a smooth parameter space. It's the Cantor set. It's the um, if you look at a supernatural number, uh, as, uh, with, uh, in, in Larry Smith's terminology, which is reformulation of Dixme's um, generalized integer uh, approach to uh, Glim's classification. If you look at two to the um, exponent for two times three to the exponent for three and five for the exponent for five and so on, B e stands for exponent, then the supernatural numbers including the natural numbers are infinite sequences of um, of natural numbers extended natural numbers zero one two three up to infinity so that's like that's a compact um uh just totally disconnected metric space the um, zero zero one two up to infinity and um the, the, so the supernatural numbers are just the infinite cartesian product of totally disconnected um, compact spaces and so they form a Cantor set. <coughs> the, um, and furthermore, the UHF algebras, the infinite, the corresponding infinite tensor products of matrix algebras, in a very natural way, they form a continuous field over the Cantor set, continuous field of these algebras. You just, um, uh, I think one way to look at it is you express them as, um, as sub-algebras of, um, um, of, you take the largest, uh, you take the largest supernatural number where all the exponents are infinite, all the primes occur to infinitely many times. And then you, 
uh, um, embed any other uh, with a smaller exponents. You just take um, the tensor product of the of a certain number of the um, of the uh, copies in the in the um, infinite tensor product, and that so that gives you a so you get a subfield of a continue of the trivial continuous field of, of, uh, over the Cantor set. And um, another way of looking at it is um, you, you look at the real line and you cut it up with respect to a subgroup of the, um, you look at a subgroup of the um, natural numbers, sorry, a subgroup of, of, of the rational numbers containing the integers. This is how Dixmier pointed out, this is what Dixmier pointed out is equivalent to supernatural numbers. You, you um, look at subgroups uh, containing the number one and contained in Q. And the equality of those subgroups is the same as the equality of the corresponding supernatural numbers. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. Well, okay. You see, you cut up the, um, you cut up the line according to uh, the, um, um, according to the subgroup of the um, rationals. And then you, so you have a, Cantor, you have a commutative AF algebra sitting on the line. Then you translate it by, um, by um, you, you look at partial isometries got by um, uh, acting on those on projections in that uh, algebra by uh, translations in the, in the with the rational numbers um, under consideration. And those um, um, that, that gives you the um, UHF algebra, the corresponding UHF algebra. And it's a, it's a, it depends in a continuous way. Uh, I, I noticed this, func this functorial construction um, um, <clears throat> in, 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 a, in, a, it's in a paper of mine for the, for the conference Ring Theory Waterloo 1978. And a little after that, some actually it was 20 years, Takasaki uh, took, took this uh, functorial construction and he took and he extended it. Um, he showed, he pointed out that, that, that it passed to the weak closure in the trace representation. Uh, and so you didn't just get an action, say, say we do it for the, the whole group Q. So you break up the real line by the rational points and, and do translations, but then you can do dilations. And, and this extends to the two infinity factor and, you, and, and it extends to the uh, real line, not just for, to the rationals, but to the whole real line. And, and the trace is scaled, of course, by dilations. So you get, uh, 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 he, he noticed that you got a, a concrete, um, uh, 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 construction of the um, trace scaling one parameter automorphism group of the um, amenable two infinity um, uh, factor. Um, so the <coughs> so UHF algebras are uh, quite fundamental, uh, um, of course. But then uh, there are also what um, are often called the Efros. Uh, 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 Shen uh, ceased algebras, which um, I, I had also um, in the same paper where I um, gave this uh, construction, I also pointed out that um, that if, if for any totally ordered group, you had a, an AF algebra, any countable totally ordered group, you had an AF algebra. And, and Efros and Shen no noticed that that was um, continued fractions. And so you get, and, and, and so you get a nice, uh, just so just the way you have um just the way you have um um a continuous field of rotation algebras i didn't even mention that yet um you you have a, a well i said the whole you get the whole continuous field of uh, including the the, 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 the the elliptic curves plus the rotation algebras plus okay plus the stabilized rotation algebras and and um and the isomorphism condition is the same, interestingly enough. Um, well, um, the, the um, another way of getting the, um, well, a way of see, seeing the Efros uh, Shen algebras as um, a continuous field is you take the rotation algebra, you take the rotation algebra, and you, uh, well, you, if you would cut up the circle that the rotation actually, if you cut it up along an orbit, then, then uh, Joachim did this once and he pointed out that, um, that this, uh, if you take the cross product and by rotation on this, then this reduces the K1 group by, um, 
by one uh, dimension. You get z instead of z squared for the, what you do for the rotation algebra. But what uh, Zhuang knew and I did was notice that if you look at the other uh, unitary, which is the canonical generator in the cross plot, if you cut that up also, cut them both up, then you get an AF algebra with the, and of course it's the, um, it's the, it has the same K0 group, it's the F cross uh, Shen uh, uh, AF uh, algebra. And so you get a continuous field of those two. The Timson and Wojciechowski had of course got this embedding in, into, the, into the AF algebra with the same K0 group with the class of the unit, same class of the unit. But their embedding involved a whole lot of choices. It was, it was, what it, what it was very, of course, very important. It was the first, uh, uh, um, it was really the first, um, uh, certainly it was approximate uh, uh, intertwining. It was the first one-sided approximate intertwining argument. Um, well, it was the first, it was the first approximate intertwining argument, I guess. And because um, uh, AF isomorphism could be, or AF uh, homomorphism could be done by exact intertwining. So the so Pimson and like this, you had a embedding of the um, rotation algebra in this, um, in the f ross algebra, but it um, um, involved a lot of choices using the uniqueness theorem, using a uniqueness theorem at every stage, throwing in lots of unitaries to make the di make the um, one-sided intertwining and make it approximately commuted. Well, okay, so um, in one fell swoop, you get the algebra, just throw in the spectral projections. An interesting question, I think, is you so suppose you don't throw in all the spectral projections, you just throw in finitely many uh, of these canonical spectral projections in both uh, for both the unitaries. Well, of course, if you just throw in one for one of them and one for the other, you have the Seastra algebra generated by two projections and that's a type one Seastra algebra. Well, obviously, uh, it seems to me quite obviously if you take finitely many projections cutting uh, the spectrum of, um, of the uh, one circle, then finitely many also you have intervals, uh, the canonical intervals uh, on the um, spectrum of the other unitary then those, those finite set of projections altogether should generate also a type one Seastra algebra, giving the, um, so the, uh, would, which would explain why the, um, why the um, inductive limit was an AF algebra, because um, the inductive limit of, um, this would be very, this would be, ought to be quite simple, um, quite well, quite very elementary, um, uh, subhomogeneous algebras, maybe splitting interval algebras, and the this this is how this is how um, uh, Bradley and Kishimoto had already shown that the um, that the um, if you take the rotation algebra and flip it, then the fixed point subalgebra is AF. This inductive limit of I guess of these algebras generated by two projections uh, was that simple. Well, um, so that the, this, so far I'm only talking about um, well-behaved classifications of, uh, with the space of moduli. That, 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 um, but um, what Dix, already Dix may notice that if you tensorize, t tensorize if you tenderize some um, uh, UHF algebras by tensoring them with the compact operators, then the it's, the parameterization is no longer smooth. The um, you can change. Um, Finitely many finite exponents, and that, and that means that you're going to get most, almost all the orbits in the uh, Cantor set are going to be dense, and so the quotient space is uh, is not no of interest, no interest either um, topologically or um, or from a Borel point of view. So Dixme, it was Dixme who pointed out that what you do then is instead of looking at the concrete group contained between the integers and the rational numbers, you look at the abstract group. You just pass from the concrete to the abstract. And he even noticed that that was the same as, uh, as the Murray von Neumann equivalents that I mentioned a little earlier. Um, <clears throat> so, so it was not, uh, it was pretty easy for uh, a recent graduate student uh, like me to notice this and, and apply uh, the, um, the K0 technique to the um, Dixme's K0 technique, if you like, to the um, to Brad Bradley's generalization of uh, of Glim UHF algebras. <coughs> um, uh, 
and and um, <coughs> so the, so so the from the general classification point of view, what has suddenly happened is instead of looking at a concrete uh, parameter, namely this concrete subgroup of rational numbers containing the uh, integers or the concrete um, supernatural number, what one is doing is looking at, um, uh, well, <coughs> uh, I've expressed it quite dramatically in writing. Uh, I wish I had it up on the screen. The solution to this, um, uh, that the isomorphism classes themselves are, are miserable. The solution to this, not to have been predicted at all, and surely somewhat of a miracle, is just to settle for a, a functor to a simpler category, a functor from the complicated category to a simpler category. I have it. Um, uh, I have a pictorial representation of that. Um, the left hand, um, the left hand um, circle is the category to be. Uh, um, classified which which more than likely um is has uh, non uh, smooth a non smooth space of moduli and then you you um, find some smaller category uh, hopefully not just the category of isomorphism classes because that isomorphisms will certainly pass to the category of isomorphism classes but homomorphisms will not pass to isomorphism classes and that's um and that's uh, to give you a category, and that's um, uh, for sister algebra. You need the homomorphism, not just the um, uh, isomorphism, to talk about to prove classification. Well, okay. So, except, of course, the what you want is uh, separating isomorphism classes, a functor to a simpler category, separating um, isomorphism classes, a classification functor. By a, simpler, by a simpler category, what do I mean by a simpler category? Um, <coughs> it, um, well, uh, it, it's one with fewer automorphisms, obviously. If it says a non-commutative Seastra algebra has many uh, uh, automorphisms, which are not so interesting, the inner ones. And uh, if you, so you look for a, a, a functor that kills the inner automorphisms. In fact, if you just take homomorphisms, if you just take um, uh, let, let's imagine these circles now as categories. This is the, um, uh, the category to be classified. This is the category to be, um, this is the classifying category. So you um, look at uh, uh, objects upstairs and then objects downstairs. Well, well, what is, okay, well, I'm going to construct an abstract category, an abstract classifying category. You look at, you look at objects upstairs, and you, then you take the modulo, modulo um, inner automorphism, inner automorphism, you don't divide out by arbitrary automorphism, you divide out by inner automorphism. So then you, it gives you, a, gives you a, a category downstairs because if you compose, if you have two arrows, and if you have two, two arrows in a category with inner automorphisms, and you put a whole lot of uh, inner automorphisms in between, the no, and a whole lot of automorphisms, inner automorphisms at the end. Well, the ones in the middle just push through to the end. Uh, that's the that's the basic property of an, inner, of an inner automorphism. It just pushes through. I don't know whether that's equivalent for unital Seastra algebras. If you have a unital uh, homomorphism, and uh, well, and the, the co-domain is arbitrary. If on the domain um, you have an automorphism, and it, for any homomorphism into another one, another algebra, it pushes through to an, another automorphism on the um, on the codomain side instead, which extends to the whole algebra. Is that um, is that necessarily an inner automorphism? Well, uh, you get a category that way, and and for and, and if you take approximate uh, uh, unitary equivalence, you get a category also. And that category for AF algebras is just Bradley diagrams. And then for every for every abstract category with this kind of for arbitrary separable Seastra algebras, you get this abstract category. But it um, uh, every abstract category is not too large. It's a is a is a is a, is a, is a you know, native viable. It's, a, it's equivalent to a concrete category. And the concrete category for um, in the case of AF algebras is just uh, K zero. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, um, 
and, and so what was my comment about concrete uh, uh, classifying categories? When, when is it going to be a smaller one? What's an example of a smaller category, of a simpler category with fewer automorphisms? Well, if you look at just the, the, the um, category of subgroups of the rational numbers, very few subgroups of the rational numbers have automorphisms, just the same as, um, as, as very few, um, as almost all orbits are dense. So, uh, uh, well, oh, and <clears throat> if you look at Q squared, then subgroups of Q squared are um, almost never have automorphisms except for multiplying by minus one. And for, for, for Kirchberg algebras, that's what the invariant is. It's just a countable uh, Bielian group. Uh, well, a pair of them, an even one and an odd one, and the and so more. So generally, the uh, there are no. Um, this is a very simple category, even if it's um, even if it also inherits the um, uh, non-smooth um, moduli space. The the um, <clears throat> the classification function for AF algebras can interestingly. Be described as the Bradley uh, um, diagram, as at least implicitly Bradley did. His uh, his uh, I, I did say that his equivalence is the diagrams become isomorphisms and homomorphisms between AF algebras give homomorphisms between the Bradley diagrams. Uh, and uh, you might say, do you have to keep track of a, of a given Bradley diagram for um, a given AF algebra? Well, you don't. You, because if you just randomly using the axiom of choice, you associate to every AF algebra a Bradley diagram giving rise to it, well, then you still have a functor. The, the, um, the functor homomorphisms between uh, two AF algebras give you, in a, in a natural way, a, a homomorphism between the corresponding, the arbitrarily corresponding, the, the arbitrarily corresponding Bradley diagrams in such a way that it's, it's associative, it is a functor. It, it, it preserves multiplication, it preserves multiplication. Um, so, so it's, a, it's really, um, the, the Bradley diagram uh, functor is really the same as, as my abstract general uh, ab abstract classifying classification functor where you look at approximate unitary equivalence classes of, of home algebra of homomorphisms. That works for arbitrary separable C algebras, by the way, with the standard intertwining argument. In fact, it works for um, uh, arbitrary uh, accountable, accountable groups or arbitrary accountable uh, algebras over a field. Interestingly, um, if there are certain, um, so you get a classification theory for arbitrary um, countable groups in terms of an abstract um, classifying uh, category. It's hard to say what it is, even for finite simple groups. It's hard to say what that um, what that uh, abstract classifying category is. But for, for a certain class, a certain class of um, of, uh, of countable simple groups, uh, it, it's um, it's it's uh, interesting to look at the um, at the abstract classifying category. Because um, so what is, what is it? You look at finite products of alternating groups. You go large enough so they're simple. So you look at finite products of simple alternating groups, just like fi uh, finite direct sums of matrix algebras. And um, then the, you look at maps between them between alternating groups that are what you might call diagonal. Um, they, they just uh, come in terms of diagonal, uh, putting permutations in block diagonal down 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 the um, next uh, set of symbols. So very canonical, very simple maps between the finite products of alternating groups. But uh, if, if, the, all the, if all the embeddings are non-trivial, then the inductive limit is going to be, um, is, is going to be a, simple, a simple group. And furthermore, the, the um, abstract classifying, uh, the abstract classifying uh, uh, category, the abstract classification functor is going to be a Bradley diagram. So you get Bradley diagrams just as for uh, AF algebras, uh, and, and it's a complete invariant, uh, just fine. Uh, the only trouble is that uh, it's, it doesn't seem to be the K0 of anything. So for, for the matrix algebras, you get the algebra. You don't just get the Bradley diagram, you get the um, algebra. And the, and the uh, sorry, you don't just get the Bradley diagram, you get the K0 group. 
you get the ordered group. And in fact, the category of Bradley diagrams is isomorphic to the category of ordered groups. But for the, if you're uh, class, ca category to be classified is just simple countable groups, which come from these alternating finite products of alternating groups. Well, um, the, the, um, you, the classification is in terms of dimension groups, but the dimension group isn't, as far as I can see, it's not K0 or anything. Okay, well, uh, no, it isn't it nice to have, it's nice for it to be K0. Um, so, that, so this is what I was saying. The, uh, this, is what I, uh, this is my next written point on this. A second miracle, besides the existence of the functor in the first place, uh, the Kabatli diagram functor, is equivalent, uh, the, the second miracle is that the category of Bradley diagrams is equivalent to a category of ordered groups. And this considered as a natural transformation reveals uh, Bradley's functor to be just K0. The advantage of K0, of course, is that it makes sense for any ring. Furthermore, as Larry Brown reminded me uh, shortly after, um, in very, in, uh, you, can, you can guess when it is, when it was, as, as Larry Brown reminded me, there is also K1. So, so, because um, he had said to me that what I had done was K0, and I said, so, and, and, and uh, uh, so he said, so, there's also K1. And this is exactly when I was trying to lift projections to show that an extension of one AF algebra by another is AF. And uh, uh, I think, he, I, I, obviously, he was just giving me a hint, because he doesn't like to write papers. He wanted me to do it. Uh, but uh, so, but, he, but I didn't take the hint, and so shortly later, a little after, he wrote a paper saying he can lift projections, and therefore, by uh, Elliot's work, uh, extension of AF by AF is AF. Um, and, um, but, the, but of course, the lifting projections uses the six-term exact sequence for K0 and K1 for the, for the, uh, the quotient, that's the extension. Well, this, uh, this is a story in itself. Well, I just told the story. I'm sorry. Huh. But almost uh, half a century later, uh, uh, it has resulted in a complete classification of all uh, what might be called well-behaved simple c algebras by means of the very simple invariant consisting of K0 and K1 considered. Now, here's my uh, 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 a slightly new, possibly new uh, take on, on the, um, the naive, what I like to call the naive invariant, because there are lots of other invariants. Um, um, beyond the um, what's sometimes called the Elliot invariant. I mean, I, um, is that, I, I sometimes ask myself, is that my only invariant? <laughs> well, okay. But anyway, here's an even more austere form of the uh, Elliot invariant. You, you look at the two groups, K0 and K1, simply as, as countable abelian groups for separable C geometry. Okay. And, um, and then there's a, then you have the uh, tracial cone. Uh, actually, um, once, uh, I guess 1995 in Waterloo, I don't remember whether Bruce was there or not, but um, uh, or who else might, might have been, but um, in the lecture I, I wrote on the, I remember writing on the board uh, in an obvious context, uh, key theory suffices. Okay, but then uh, afterwards someone said, there's also traces. Well, to me, okay, ever since then, I've been kind of uh, stinging from that. Um, and because um, I thought it was the same thing, with unitary invariant functionals, it's dual. But in fact, in fact, it's even better than that. It gets even better than that. Uh, um, K uh, traces, the affine, space of affine functions on, um, on uh, traces is, is just a, uh, it's just, it's just a, a subgroup of, um, of algebraic K1. It's in a subgroup of algebraic K1. People have been talking a lot about algebraic K1 uh, and introduced, first introduced in classification theory by um, Klaus Thompson and Karen Ayer and Nielsen. But um, um, there, there are two ways to, you have to remember, you always should always remember there are two ways to define uh, the two, uh, the proper way of defining algebraic K1 is to look not just at unitaries, but invertible elements. This works for any ring then. And um, in, in a Seastra algebra, the invertible elements have a unitary part, and the unitary um, traces come into the, the, uh, the, the construction of the abelianization of the unitary part, too. But the traces modulo um, 
It's affine functions modulo the image of K0. So that's not, doesn't recover the traces. In fact, the, um, but, but if you look at the, the uh, polar decomposition and the sulfur joint part of the polar decomposition, that, that's an invertible positive uh, operator, a veritable positive element of the algebra. Well, um, the logarithm of that is a sulfur joint element. And then it's, uh, you get, whenever you have any element of the, um, of the um, Cister algebra, if sulfur joint element of the Cister algebra, you exponentiate it, you get a positive element. This, this is a, um, this is the um, affine functions. This, this, the positive part of the um, algebraic K1 is an abelian group, which is just the affine functions on the, um, topologically also, it's just the affine functions on the, um, on the tracial simplex, say for a unital algebra. Um, so, um, so, so um, K, K theory suffices, includes uh, traces, I'm uh, happy to say. But, uh, but uh, anyway, you take the, in this uh, bare bones description, uh, you, you to say, you take the, um, the two, even, the even group and the odd group, and then you, um, um, you have the, the, this cone, which has a simplex base. The simplex is not determined by the cone. Uh, uh, unless it's a Bauer simplex, but um, if it, it, different. But, but we're talking about so we're talking about stable Cister algebras, and you have the cone of because we want to include the non-unital case. So you um, a stable projectionless case. So you have a, the, the tracial cone, um, and then um, which has a compact base, which is a simplex, and then uh, you, that's paired by cyclic homology. That's by cyclic homology that's paired with the K zero group using the fact that uh, if you have an unbounded trace, it's finite on the Peterson ideal. So it's a, whenever you have a trace functional on an algebra, then you get paired with K0. You don't have to um, worry about adjoining units, um, which is terrible if the, if the trace of the unit is infinite. It's a kind of renormalization. Of, uh, uh, it seems to be a carryover of the physics renormalization to, um, to traces uh, of, uh, on K0. Okay. Um, so you get uh, traces paired with K0, whether the algebra uh, is unital or not. <clears throat> uh, okay, but this is the invariant. Uh, forget about, you don't need to talk about order structure on K0. And, and this invariant is uh, just the two abstract groups and the tracial cone might be zero and paired with the uh, even cone, uh, paired with the even abelian group. Um, and, and this is completely arbitrary. The, the abelian groups, accountable abelian groups are completely arbitrary. And the, tra and the tracial cone is completely arbitrary, arbitrary simplex um, base, uh, not, even though the simplex is not unique, that doesn't matter so much. Um, and, and then the pairing, the pairing is completely arbitrary. Um, now, this, that means it applies to all separable simple Cister algebras. But so when can you classify it? When can you actually classify it? When is this invariant complete? Well, that's when the algebra is amenable on the one hand, that's half of what a well-behaved means. And, and um, uh, the other half is, well, for phenomenal algebras, that's already enough. If they're amenable phenomenal algebras or separable pre dual then they're classifiable. Cohen, the whole, uh, uh, um, well, uh, people ever people ever since Murray and Fanon. Um, but um, for the uh, Cister algebras, uh, you um, sometimes when you tenderize the algebra, it's get you get a different algebra. If it's if it's uh, so, how, what tender, tenderizing means? Uh, tensorizing with I can't even I can't even pronounce those two words differently. Um, if you if you tenderize with the um, Jang Su algebra, then that's an idempotent process. You do, you do it twice, you get the same thing, and uh, and and most of the time you can't tell whether you've done it the first time, because the uh, most of the most of the time the algebra is going to be uh, uh, already uh, tender. That's my theory. Uh, in fact, uh, um, that's the case for the algebras. It turned out that was the case for the algebras that. Um, that uh, Joachim was talking about. And, um, well, okay. Um, 
Well, so let's... shall we shall we leave some time for questions? Sure. Uh, I've, um, I have another uh, another five pages which could easily um, wait another thirty years. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that you, the classification theorem, and um, it, I'll it, be around. <laughs> It helped, us, it helped to solve the powers by um, the vector. It helped to solve a very useful class, classifying Caesar algebra. Sorry? I can't, I can't hear you. Well, I, I'm, okay. I'm, I wasn't hearing you. We, oh. have, we have two cameras here running at the same time, and there is some. Okay, I hope there's Just no. Anyway, I don't. There's nothing more. I don't think there's anything more I have to um, to to um, to say. It's really just piled higher and deeper. Um, <laughs> um, Didn't we start a little bit late, though? I mean, I think we started like quarter after nine or something. Did we? Well, I I, I don't time this. Uh, um, I, 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 if there's, if someone wants to hear a couple more, one or, one or two more pages, then um, then I could oblige um, um, if I can find them. Yeah, so um, as, as far as what the class of well-behaved simple Caesar algebras uh, is, is concerned, it is not the class of, of absolutely all separable, simple, amenable Caesar algebras. But what was explicitly recognized by Tongs and Winter as a robust proper subclass and should perhaps be named after them as the Tongs Winter class. The point is that, as shown by Villison, the bare invariant, as described above, does not work for all simple, separable, amenable Caesar algebras. Even assume that one must to, to satisfy. Can you hear me now? The possibly redundant universal coefficient. <laughs> the reason is that uh, tensorizing or tenderizing with the non type one complex numbers, that's uh, otherwise known as the Jang Su and algebra, it's, it's almost the Blackadar algebra. Uh, the, the, the Blackadar's projectionless, uh, uh, stably projectionless Easter algebra, that's the, um, the same as the Razak algebra W. The, uh, the, just the study by Razak and Jaslon. That's the same algebra. The the um, the Zhang Su algebra differs from Blackadar's um, uh, unital projection this algebra, but not by very much. Um, the K one is uh, is different. Okay, but the the, the, the So as, as follows by, from work by Wilson and Roy. George, can you be a little louder? Because I'm not sure everyone hears you. We had a small connection problem. I don't know at which, in which continent. <laughs> I, do hear, I do hear you, uh, yes. Yeah. So you have another five minutes and uh, tell us. We won't okay, wait well, 30 years. I don't need that much if I, if I, if I, um, Okay. I avoid digressions. I avoid digressions, and it doesn't take that long. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. So, um, I mean, I'm I'm used to taking uh, I'm used to a seminar taking all afternoon, but this is uh, people. You can't hold up people all over the world, right? Okay. Um, so, uh, so, so it does sometimes change the algebra. Tenderizing the algebra sometimes does sometimes change it. Uh, regularizing it, one might say. Well, tenderizing it. The, I, have to, I have to remember that. The classifiable algebras are the regularized or tenderized algebras uh, by Jang and Su. This is an item potent process. Notably, Winter, Tequesis, and uh, um, more recently, other people uh, um, have shown that Jang Su stability is equivalent to the property of finite nuclear dimension introduced by Kirchberg and Winter and Zacharias. This had been conjectured by Thomas and Winter. As it turns out, it is easier to identify a class of both Easter algebras by means of the criterion of Jang Su stability. Aside from the almost cheating approach of tenderizing a given algebra, almost legitimate if you think it's uh, likely that it's already Jang Su stable, 
as it seems most naturally arising algebras are. The result of Kerr and Jabot that the cross product, to one more technical comment, uh, the, the result of Kerr and Jabot that the cross product of a separable unital commutative C to algebra with a finite dimensional spectrum by a free and minimal action of a sub exponential amenable group, uh, accountable discrete group, is classifiable. They, they, they do it by proving Zhang Su's stability. Uh, the, and there's an earlier result, much more special by Jabo, Wu, and Zacharias, if, they, if you assume polynomial growth, and also the, assume that the group is finitely generated. And then, then the conclusion in that case is finite. The only thing they can do to uh, get directly is finite nuclear dimension. But then even if the group isn't finitely generated, you're going to, you're, you're going to get into the union of sub finitely generated subgroups. The, you, the finite nuclear dimension won't be finite in the end. Maybe. Of course, in the end, finite nuclear dimension means nuclear dimension one or, or zero if it's AF. Anyway, that's, um, uh, I think that's an, well, okay, there are some results about uh, non-finite dimensional spaces too. It seems that always you want to prove Jang Su's stability. If you look at cross products of, of, uh, of um, co uh, commutative C to algebras, if the uh, transformation has mean dimension zero, then the cross product is Jang Su's stable. Uh, okay, the, uh, the, the, um, the, 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 um, Maybe one that's the end of the talk. One, sorry? One, one reason for me to, to, uh, to um, uh, promote the, um, the Jiang Su algebra is it was discovered uh, by uh, uh, people, by people here, postdocs here. But uh, that's irrelevant, I guess. All right, <laughs> it, it goes much, uh, it's much more important than that. Thank you. No, no, we thank you, George. <laughs>